So the concept of tea is pretty simple. You have leaves, water, and a few moments later, voila, a tasty and exquisite beverage. You don't need a lot of gear to sort of complicate things, but if you wanted to, if you're really so inclined, within these basic simple steps, there's also room to really dial in and get super nerdy about the brewing methods and you know, different brewing parameters in order to make that perfect cup of tea. And one parameter that we often get questions about is the water temperature that you need to brew your tea at. And yes, in order to get the most out of your tea leaves, different tea types, different tea leaves will require different temperatures to brew at. And what's needed to get that right is a good, accurate temperature control kettle. One like this one here. So the good people at Kokinar, Kokinair, Kokinari, uh, I don't know, these guys here, they reached out to us a while back and asked us if we wanted to try out their flow gooseneck kettle. We said sure, they sent one out to us and well, here we are. So full disclosure, they did send this one out to us for free uh, to use and review, but for what it's worth, all opinions in this video are my own. So here goes. So right off the bat, is this kettle any good? And the answer is, yeah, I think it's a pretty good kettle. And I definitely recommend it if you can get it. Uh, it's unfortunately not available in Australia at the moment, uh, but it is available in the US and you can get it online uh, through their website. Uh, the price is pretty comparable with other well-known brands of temperature control kettles. Here's my breakdown of why I think this kettle is pretty great and a few of the shortcomings that I've come across as I've been using this kettle specifically to brew tea gone full star. So like many other gooseneck kettles out there, the pouring action is fairly precise and it's quite easy to adjust the flow and get the exact amount of water um, that you're looking for coming out of the kettle. And after a little bit of practice and with the right technique, I do feel like you've got maximum control over the rate at which the water flows out of the kettle. Now, just one little issue I have though is that with this precision, uh, it comes at the sacrifice of speed. So for example, this guy one, it's approximately 150 milliliters in capacity. And the flow gooseneck kettle here, it takes approximately somewhere between seven to eight seconds for it to fill up. Whereas a previous gooseneck kettle that I've been using for many years, it takes approximately four seconds for that to fill up. So it might seem a little trivial, but if you can imagine with a slower pour, the tea will be steeping in the water in the gaiwan for a little bit longer than usual, like an extra three or so seconds. And with Gongfu style brewing, where each infusion is literally only about five to 10 seconds, uh, an extra three seconds in steep time can make quite a difference in the brew. It's not a deal breaker, but it does mean that I just need to remember to adjust my steep times a little bit when using this kettle to brew particular teas that may be a little bit more sensitive to differing steep times. So I do like and appreciate the analog style dial over the buttons that you find in a lot of other kettles. It feels more intuitive and you can get to the right temperatures quicker than if you were compared to repeatedly button mashing like with many other kettles. Plus there's also this temperature hold feature that's you know pretty handy. I mean most other kettles have it. Now what I find impressive about this hold feature is that it actually holds the temperature quite consistently. I've had other kettles where it also has the hold feature but it kind of lets the temperature drop like about two or three degrees before the boiler kicks back in and it brings the temperature back up. I guess one small area for improvement would be it'd be nice if there was a instant, you know, kind of boil button uh, or like a quick boil button instead of always having to kind of, you know, if, if say for example, I had the temperature at, down at 20 degrees or it was at 50 deg uh, degrees and then having to turn the dial all the way up to 100 in order to boil the water, it'd be nice to just have like a button where I can press and it takes me to boil instead of always having to turn the dial, you know, all the way to 100. So another feature of this kettle, according to the website, is quick heating. I thought it'd be kind of fun to 
have a bit of a race between these three here. So these two kettles are ones that I've been using before. Um, I've got my hands on this on, on the Flow Gooseneck. The maximum capacity for all of the of, of, for all three is a little bit different, but I'm basing it off the Flow Gooseneck kettle, which is about 900 milliliters. Uh, so all these kettles have 900 milliliters in them. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna hit boil and start on all three of them. Hopefully it doesn't blow a fuse, and we get to see. Uh, just how fast this flow gooseneck kettle really is. So here goes. And we're off. And the boiler for the, for the boilers have all kicked in. Um, yeah, I blew the power board on that. Uh, so, note to self, don't plug in three kettles on the same power board. Um, but I'm determined to have this test done, so I think what I need to do is just plug in all three kettles into different power points and let it rip. So, give me a moment while I, whilst I set this little experiment up. about whether it wants to hit boil. Oh, oh but the artisan but the barista hits boil first. Lagging behind is our flow gooseneck. So that was just a little bit of fun there, but as you can see, the flow gooseneck going from room temperature to boil is a little bit slower than some of the other kettles. The old barista kettle that I had uh, versus the uh, flow gooseneck, they're actually both pretty similar um, similar times. At the start, the flow gooseneck started at, uh, the water temperature was 17 degrees, the barista was at 20 degrees, so there was, a bit, there was about a three degree difference there. Uh, and the artisan barista, the one that, the kettle that won, the boil challenge, when you set the temperature, if you're setting the kettle at a specific temperature, a lot of times it tends to overshoot the temperature. So if I set it at 90, it oftentimes goes to 93. I don't find that issue with uh, with the Flow Gooseneck and also with the old uh, Barista kettle as well. I'm not sure, but what I think it is, it's just the way that their, I guess their boilers um, are set, that with the Flow Gooseneck and with the Barista, when the kettle is about to reach that particular temperature that's set, it kind of slows down a bit, adjusts itself, and, you know, to ensure that it hits that particular temperature. Whereas I feel with the uh, with the Artisan Barista, uh, it kind of sort of streams its way towards that, you know, towards that temperature without, you know, without really stopping, and then it kind of stops when it gets there, but what happens is that the temperature continues to rise a little bit, and so that's why it tends to sort of overshoot overshoot by a few degrees um, and I guess that's also probably the reason why that won the boil challenge as well because the the boiler just goes faster hits boiling quicker but it's not as uh, that one that particular one is not as accurate when it comes to getting to specific temperatures but um so in the end when it comes to getting a kettle for tea brewing the things that you'd be looking for I'd say would be temperature accuracy and the overall ease of use of the kettle and the good news is the Flow Gooseneck Kettle has both of these. The slower water flow, whilst it took a little bit of getting used to at the beginning, after tweaking the brew parameters for certain teas, it's not really an issue anymore. And the little design touches like the analog temperature dial and the rubber grip on the handle, these just add to the overall experience of using this kettle. So if you're looking for a new temperature control kettle for tea brewing, this kettle is worth checking out if it's available to you. 
Anyway, that's the end of our video today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.